Popper Rebel Tron is a unique take on the Rebel archetype, utilizing the Tron lands to fuel Rebel tutors. These tutors allow us to search up a toolbox of Rebels for a number of situations. We also play a number of non-Rebel creatures for their added value. In order to understand how the deck works, first let's take a look at our mana base. Our mana base consists of playsets of each Tron land, and for those who don't know, the Tron lands consist of Urza's Mine, Power Plant, and Tower, and they produce one colorless mana. But if we have one of each in play, Mine and Power Plant produce two colorless mana, and Tower produces three colorless mana, for a total of seven mana. We also play 12 planes and one haunted Fengraph. The planes let us cast our creatures, while the Fengraph gives us late game value, which is huge because this deck is a grindy one. Anyways, with this much mana, we're going to need something to spend it on. That's where our first set of rebels come into play. Alright, so our first set of rebels are creatures that abuse this mana base to tutor for other rebel cards. We play 3 Ramosi Insurgents, 4 Amru Scouts, 3 Ramosi Lieutenants, and 3 Defiant Falcons for a total of 13 tutor effects. Ramosi Insurgent tutors for any rebel permanent with converted mana cost 2 or less while the others tutor for any rebel permanent with converted mana cost 3 or less. These tutors work by paying the specified amount of any color of mana, in addition to tapping it to search for a rebel. Notice that we can pay any color of mana for this ability, which is why the Tron lands are so good in this deck. The best part is though, even if we don't have Tron online, this deck still functions very well. Tron is just an added bonus. We can also activate these abilities at instant speed, allowing us to do it at the end of our opponent's turn, and if they aren't summoning sick, in response to removal. So what exactly are we tutoring for? Well, we play a toolbox of rebels each with their own purpose. First up, we have our removal package in the form of 4 Zealot Ilvec and 3 Bound in Silence. Yes, the rebel tutors search up rebel permanents, and Bound in Silence counts as a rebel permanent, so it's tutorable. Zealot Ilvec is a 1-1 with the Shadow ability, which means it can only be blocked by other creatures with Shadow, but it can only block creatures with Shadow. It also has another ability which says if our Zealot attacks and isn't blocked, we can choose to deal 1 damage to target creature. Since Zealot has Shadow, it's almost never blocked, which means this card is great at picking off 1 toughness creatures and only gets better in numbers. Bound in Silence is a pacifism effect meaning the enchanted creature can't attack or block. The downside of this is that if the enchanted creature has a notable ability like Fangrand Marauder, its abilities still work. The upside is that this can be tutored for at instant speed. And a cool trick is, if you do tutor for it, you can enchant creatures with Hexproof. The reason this works is because you aren't casting it, which means you aren't technically choosing a target. Hard casting this on a creature with Hexproof won't work since we're choosing a target when we cast it. Next up, we have our life gain package in the form of one Avon Rift Watcher and one Children of Corliss. Avon Rift Watcher is a great blocker and it gains us 4 life over the course of its short existence. Children of Corliss is a pseudo fog effect. The downside is we have to lose life before we can gain it back. But hey, a tutorable effect like this is pretty sweet. Finally, we have our closers. These aren't our only closers, they're just the ones that are tutorable. Our tutorable closers include 1 Amru Seekers and 1 Thermal Glider. Amru Seekers is a 2-2 for 3 that can only be blocked by white creatures and artifact creatures. And the only deck that this is bad against is Affinity and Tokens. Other than those two decks, no other tier 1 decks at the moment really play white creatures. Thermal Glider is a 2-1 flyer with protection from red. This means that the popular removal such as Firebolt, Flame Slash, Galvanic Blast, and Lightning Bolt can't get rid of this thing and it has evasion on top of that. That's it for our rebels, now let's talk about our non-rebel creatures. Our five non-rebel creatures consist of four Squadron Hawk and one Ulamox Crusher. Squadron Hawk is just pure value in any white deck, while Ulamox Crusher acts as a huge finisher. Next up is our artifacts. We play six artifacts in the main deck, them being two Bone Splitter and four Expedition Map. Bone Splitters turn any one of our creatures into closers, especially any one of our 14 creatures with evasion. Expedition Map helps us enable Tron and search up our one Haunted Fengraph in a pinch. The strengths of this deck are it's resilient, it's consistent, it's great against counters and discard if we have one rebel in play that can search up other rebels, it doesn't need Tron to function, and it's really fun to play. In fact, this is probably one of my favorite popper decks. 
Its weaknesses are, it's bad against big creature decks such as Affinity, it's weak to board sweepers, and it can have slow starts that allow aggro decks to beat us even before we can stabilize. For our sideboard, we play 1 Ulamog's Crusher for an extra finisher, 3 Dust to Dust for Affinity, 2 Relic of Progenitus for graveyard matchups, 3 Journey to Nowhere for added removal, 2 Circle of Protection Green for the Elves and Boggles matchup, 2 Circle of Protection Red for the red aggro matchups, and 2 Prismatic Strands for even more protection. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. We're over 500 subscribers now. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't think I would be able to get this much. So thanks, thanks for liking my videos and all that. It seems like most of you guys like the non-tier 1 deck techs better, but a good number of you also like the tier 1 deck techs. So I'll try to split the focus up a bit and do a mix of both. Um, if you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and share the video. And if you're interested in the deck, I put a link in the description that will take you to the deck list on mtggoldfish.com. There you can see the prices for both MTGO and paper. Also, don't forget to subscribe and please follow me on Twitter at popper underscore fox. And as always, don't forget to check out the popper subreddit r slash popper for all your popper needs. Thanks again, guys. Peace out.